congratulations to the DOS of 2024. Huge congratulations to all of our newly admitted students. Congratulations to all of the new Aggies and welcome to the Aggie family. Enjoy the ride. Go Aggies! Hello new Aggies. On behalf of UC Davis, welcome to Aggie Experience Live. While you're staying close to home to flatten that COVID-19 curb, we're still working hard to plan your enrollment here. We're gonna try to give you everything you need to make the right decision, and we hope that decision is to come to UC Davis and be an Aggie. There's no doubt our Aggie pride continues to shine. We're among the top five public universities in the country. We're in a great location that's close to the capital and the Bay Area. Everyone associated with the university has a bond, and we wanna make that bond one of the mechanisms that we use to get through this difficult time. We're committed to keeping students safe and doing all we can to help them succeed. Through these online opportunities, you'll discover why UC Davis is such a terrific place to learn and grow. You'll hear from faculty, staff, and students who are excited to meet you. We're here to answer your questions about UC Davis, so ask away. Want to know what the food tastes like? Ask our award-winning chef. Want to hear more about the residence halls? Talk to our students who live in them. Want to learn about finding communities on campus and people to connect with? Engage with our Resource Center students and staff. They'll be happy to introduce you to their cultural centers. Want to better understand your enrollment or financial aid package? Schedule an online phone meeting with one of our many advisors. Our virtual doors are open. We encourage you to connect so you can explore all the opportunities you'll find at UC Davis. Congratulations to all of our freshman admits and your families. We can't wait to see you. Now, let's meet our campus experts and students to learn more about life at UC Davis. Take care and go Ags. Chime in Tolo, younglings. Uh, my name is Jeff, I'm one of your academic counselors in the Department of Engineering. My name is Vanessa Talavera. I am the Leadership Development and Involvement Specialist here at CSI. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Center for Student Involvement. Um, so CSI for short, we are the umbrella organization for all the student organizations. My name is Dr. Cirilo Cortez. It is my pleasure to give you the warm welcome. Uh, I am the director of El Centro, for the Center for Chicanx and Latinx Academic Student Success at UC Davis. Hello, new Aggies. Congratulations on being admitted to UC Davis. Your accomplishments have made you stand out, and you should certainly be proud. It is in the spirit that we are bringing UC Davis to you through Aggie Experience Live, during which you will be able to connect with other students, learn more about your major, research opportunities, and life as a student. You'll also hear firsthand about our academic and cultural resources and centers, career and support services, recreational activities, the arts, and many other ways to get involved as a student. We're honored to support you on your continued academic adventure. Welcome to the Aggie family, and welcome to Aggie Experience Live. Hello everyone, welcome to Aggie Experience Live. Congratulations to you and everyone admitted to UC Davis. You are gonna make a great class of 2024. We're happy you and your families are joining us today. I'm Katerina Contreras, proud Aggie alumni, class of 2014. If you're watching live, you can submit questions using the Zoom Q&A button on your screen right there below and via Facebook. Feel free to follow and engage your fellow viewers in the chat and please, please bear in mind, you know, all of this, this is all new to us. So you might experience an internet lag here and there. So please, please, please be patient and be kind with your comments. Throughout the week, we'll be showing you things I think will make you even more excited about becoming a UC Davis Aggie. And we are recording it all. So if you miss a segment or you just want to see it again, no problem. Visit our page for all things incoming freshmen, ucdavis.edu slash Aggie experience. Today, I want to introduce you to the UC Davis campus and its many supportive communities. Check out this video. Hey future Aggies, welcome to UC Davis. Hello y'all, my name is Michael Petris. Hi everyone, my name is Wesley. Hola a todos, my name is Natalie Delgado. What I love about UC Davis is almost everything, but I feel like the sense of community is something that's really important to everyone here. Because there's something here for everyone. I am continuously still welcomed via the African American diaspora and academic clubs 
you will be able to find your community wherever you go. It's just a really unique communal and supportive atmosphere on campus. We really do behave like we're a family and that's something that I really value a lot about Davis. I can be entirely myself and embrace who I am. This is Itlali from the AB 540 and Undocumented Student Center at UC Davis. I also work at the AB 540 and Undocumented Student Center as the Basic Needs Coordinator. We offer tons of resources, including a lending library, free legal immigration support, mental health programming, basic needs programming. Positive memory that I have with this center is during midterm season when I was really stressed out and I came to this center to talk to people, they made me laugh, and I felt ready to study again. UC Davis also offers different spaces on campus, such as C-Class, informally known as El Centro, which offers different resources to the Chicanx and Latinx student population. They are very low income, first generation student friendly. The university just tried to make an effort into making everyone feel welcome. The Chicanx and Latinx graduation celebration hopes to create a celebration that fosters our appreciation for distinct cultures, struggles, and achievements within our community, as well as a remembrance, que si se puede. MINASA stands for Middle Eastern, North African, and South Asian, which essentially means that we are able to connect with all of these amazing groups and help experience and make the transition for students easier on campus. We offer safe spaces for discussion around topics such as cultural identity, academic support, and political advocacy on campus. So I definitely recommend checking out all the social medias and just connecting with the MINASA staff and attending our workshops. And I hope to see you guys on our campus soon. Hello, future Aggies. My name is Noel Salunga, and I'm the director of the Asian Pacific Islander Retention Initiative and I'm also a proud first-generation college graduate. If you decide to come to Davis, know that you will have a support network here for you, waiting for you to embrace you and take you in to make sure that you're successful on your journey. My first interaction with the API Center was meeting with our Dr. Noel Salunga. We met up throughout the quarter a couple of times and he helped me to improve my academic and also my college experience in meeting new people and also learning more things. On campus we have our Native American Academic Student Success Center, which we also call the Native Nest. It's really great because we're able to talk about things that pertain to our culture as well as to things that directly involve us. Our center is the host of actually multiple you know, tutoring spots. We have a library, we have a computer lab, we have things like Waffle Wednesday. It's a really great way just to get to know the other students who are like you in this area, as well as to be involved in things that could help you with your future. I'm David Ronson, a current third year student here at UC Davis. I'm a part of the CAMP program, or the California Alliance for Minority Participation. This program helps students like myself, underrepresented students, have better access to resources that can help us with our research, as well as communicating our research to others. As well as CAMP, I'm a member of BIG, or the Bioinnovation Group. This undergrad-run lab actually helps students like myself learn new skills and hone their skills themselves. Overall, both of these programs can help with research in general and learning more and getting involved into more. If you don't know where to start, visit the Student Community Center. The reason why we have so many student organizations on campus is because there's a lot of resources and people for support and guidance. There are a lot of ways you can find your community on campus, like through our cultural and academic support centers. There's also over 800 student clubs for everyone to explore. Plus, you can get involved through our student government, Greek life, rec sports program, study groups, and a lot more. We look forward to a great fall and we look forward to seeing you on campus. Congratulations and I hope y'all have a great first year here. And go Aggies! <laughs> Let's introduce our first student panelist from the Student Recruitment and Retention Center, Taylor Smith, 
from the LGBTQIA plus resource center, Jay Lowndes is with us. And from the Cross Cultural Center, Safia Cooper is in the house. It's gonna take just a second to get everyone up there. Hello, hello, how is everyone doing today? Hi, I'm doing Good. great. Hello. I hope everybody out there is doing great too. I'm doing awesome, yeah. <laughs> Jay, Safia, you doing good? Yeah, I'm doing good, thank you. All right, all right. Um, Taylor, I'm actually gonna start out with you, ask you a few questions, but I do wanna remind everyone that if you have specific questions, maybe for Taylor, Jay, or Safia, or everyone, make sure to submit them in the Q&A at the Zoom all the way at the bottom of the screen. Taylor, um, what is the Student Recruitment and Retention Center all about? Talk to us a little bit about that. So the Student Recruitment or Retention Center, um, also known as the SRC, is known for educational equity. So we really want to empower, engage, and um, educate all the people around the Sacramento area about what educational equity means and provide resources to UC Davis students who are already here. So I personally have been like really fortunate by a lot of the resources that they provide. And what are some of those resources that your center offers? Yeah, so we do um, community breakfast. So we'll have free food <laughs> at this one. Yes. Um, Everyone hear that? Free food? <laughs> free food, <laughs> testing resources. So we have scantrons and blue books, which for a lot of um, first year Aggies, we don't realize how important those types of things are. Um, so it's really nice to be able to have somebody to lean on when you don't have those scantrons and blue books. And then we also... Um, will have just study space. So you can always just come into the center and study there and build community there. And is it open for everyone? Yeah, as long as you're a student or a tutor or something of the sort, we have tutoring or tutors in our center as well. So um, it's, it's open for everyone. It's a really great place to find community. And you know, there's so many different centers at Davis. What would you say your center's outreach, why, why is it unique? Yeah, so our outreach is more focused on a holistic academic and um, personal development. So um, sure, all the centers will have um, their own ways of doing that, but we are more community-based in the sense that um, we have seven different communities. So we have like an African diaspora community, we have a Chicanx and Latinx community, a Native community, transfers. Um, we also have Filipinx and um, uh, Southeast Asian. So we have a lot of different communities within us. And so how can students learn more and get involved if this is something that they are interested in? Yeah, um, so you're able to come into the Student Community Center um, where we are housed and you can just walk in and you'll be kindly greeted and um, <laughs> they will connect you to who you're looking for, um, provide those resources for you um, so you can drop in. You can go to our website srrc.ucdavis.edu and um, find out a little bit more about each program that we have and things of that sort. Awesome, thank you so much, Taylor. I'm sure everyone will remember for sure the free food part. So. <laughs> yes, free food. <laughs> exactly. Next up, before we talk to Jay, I do wanna remind everyone to just drop that question in the Zoom Q&A, or even if you're listening on Facebook, drop a question for Taylor, Jay, or Safia. Um, we wanna answer them for everyone. So Jay, hello, how are you? <laughs> Hi, I'm doing really well. I'm Jay, I use they, them pronouns. Um, I'm a fourth year community and regional development major and I work as a community coordinator at the Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender, Queer, Intersex, and Asexual Resource Center. So if you identify as anything within that community, we really strongly recommend um, that you come into the center when you're able to obviously quarantine fields, but um, <laughs> we hope that I can give you a lot of information in this so that you feel like you're at least sort of there. Definitely, Jay, so what will they find there? Yeah, so we have a really great variety of physical resources and then also um, more intangible resources like community 
and um, just general holistic support. That's what all of our centers really try and uh, try and provide. I think it's like one of my favorite things about UC Davis. Um, our center in particular, I think one of the things that students are always happy to hear about is that we provide free um, safer sex resources like condoms, dental dams, um, and also like information about how to um, engage in safer sex because obviously like um, college can be an experience where um, people might need those resources and we want to get rid of that cost barrier. There's also free menstrual health resources for people who menstruate and um, lots of physical resources as well just like test materials and um, we have a library that I think is a great physical resource where people can check out all sorts of really cool books about LGBTQIA issues. Definitely, and all that information can be intimidating if it's new to people. And so how does the, you know, that center create a safe space for people to feel comfortable? Yeah, I mean, I think one part that makes our center a great safe space is that um, the physical space itself is just gorgeous. We have um, a really big study space where a lot of people will come and study or just hang out with their friends. I've seen a lot of friendships just Ooh, Jay, one second. No. You lagged. Oh, sorry. Okay, it's okay. That's what, uh, this is all new. This is all new. I just want to make sure that we, we're getting the information, everyone. Could you say that one more time, Jay? Yeah, so our physical space is really beautiful. The study space, I've seen a lot of great friendships happen there. Um, people just will come and meet like their new best friend. I mean, I met my uh, I met a lot of my friends just at the center, just coming in. Um, I think also a great thing is we uh, really try and provide for queer and trans students like whole needs. So we have a little queer and trans specific pantry. It's a miniature of the greater pantry, which I'm sure you'll hear about in other info sessions. And um, we also just like really try and create a lot of community focused events for folks to meet new people and um, you know just experience life at UC Davis as a queer and trans student. Definitely and you were talking about um, a lot of different services and are those services confidential? Yeah so a lot of our services are just you go in and you take what you need and we trust that you're taking what you need and we don't need any further information from you. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I think is really cool is we are actually one of the only uh, centers in like all the UC system that does totally confidential um, HIV testing. So it's anonymous, it's confidential, and we actually host it once a month in our center. And that's a great sexual health resource. And it's just a really cool thing that was started by students here at our center. And Jay, we actually have a question for you um, from Nathan. Nathan wants to know how active the Davis queer community is and what accommodations does Davis have for trans students specifically? Yeah, okay. I'm so excited that y'all asked me that. Thank you, David, in the chat. Love that. Um, <laughs> Okay, so actually the reason why I picked UC Davis when I came in as a freshman was because I saw our center and I heard from some folks who had already gone to UC Davis that the queer community here is just like exceptional. I really feel like we're a very tight knit community. Uh, we have so much love for each other and I really think that um, you'll, you'll see if you end up going to Davis and you're a part of this community that like it's not clicky, it doesn't feel, um, like there's any like opposing groups like we really do all come together and I think that's really beautiful. Um, I think also in terms of resources for trans students I think a big one is just all the UCs are going through a big process with um, the lived name and gender marker um, aspect of like going to a school as a university. Uh, not everyone has their not everyone has their name like legally changed if they're trans and um, or if they just want a name change or a gender marker change. Mm -hmm. um, and so what UC Davis does in particular that I think is really cool is once you are a student, you can change your name with like no questions asked um, on mm -hmm. our campus directory. And it makes it so that it's so much easier for you to actually like be called by your name, which is a really important thing for trans people. I know like as someone who has 
uh, gone through that and changed my name. Like it made such a difference when teachers were actually like, you know, calling me by the name that I identify with. Um, and then we'll also like get you in touch with all sorts of really cool resources uh, that might be more specific to your certain situation. Amazing. And so how can students learn more and get involved if they are interested? Yeah, so obviously once all this is over, if you're able to come to campus, um, we're open in the summer if things are looking different COVID-19 wise. Mm -hmm. um, so you can come in and drop into the center and we actually like do a lot of resource referrals that way or help get people tuned in with community that way. But also you can always just go to our website. It's lgbtqia.ucdavis.edu. And it's just really great, um, lots of information there and you can get all of our contact information for our career staff. And they're all just really lovely people. And you can find that there. Amazing, thank you so much, Jay. Thank you. All righty, Safia, I know you've been sitting in silence and you're ready to answer all of my questions. And we actually have an anonymous question for you or Taylor. So hold up on that. We're gonna get into some Safia questions. And again, everyone make sure to go into that chat room, ask the questions. We're gonna try and answer as many as we possibly can. Safia, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? I am. I am fabulous. We have almost a thousand people in here. I know. Questions. Here we go. So how does the Cross-Cultural Center benefit first year Aggies? Yeah. So um, first and foremost, my name is Sophia. Um, I'm a second year communications major. Um, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm from South Central LA. Um, I work at the Cross Cultural Center as the uh, Black Joy Fest event coordinator. And so some of the unique ways that the Cross Cultural Center um, will, will be able to serve uh, first, um, first year Aggies mm -hmm. is um, we have uh, about our, our whole mission is to we strive to create a more just and liberated world. And um, we're really all about uh, learning about advocacy and how to be, how to support others in the, communi in the communities that we have. Um, just like the LGBTQIA plus community, we also have uh, a place to study, relax, laugh, cry. Um, we also have pads, condoms, uh, lube and produce. And you can also get scantrons and blue books to utilize and uh, our library as well. And um, we also have uh, counseling services available. Mm -hmm. And um, her, name, uh, her name is Tatum. So if you go on our website, you can see all of the positions and you can also find counseling services at the Cross Cultural Center as well. I, you answered probably five of my questions. I know. <laughs> I did. I can no, go a little bit deeper. I love it. I love it, Safia. I love it. Um, could you expand a little bit more on some programs and activities that you yeah. Have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, um, we currently serve uh, about seven communities. So that's the Black, African, Diaspora community, the Native, Indigenous community, Latinx community. Uh, we have Manasa, which is known as... Um, Middle Eastern, North African, South Asian communities. And we also serve, we also serve the API, Asian Pacific Islander, mixed and multi-ethnic communities, and lastly, the international communities. So we have a big, big job at the Cross Cultural Center. Um, and we're constantly on our feet to create new events and programs that will support um, all these different students. And it's great seeing people um, come in the center and want to teach people to learn more and the career staff and the student staff like really come together as well to make it happen. And if students do want to get involved and possibly maybe be in a leadership role, how, how can they do that? Yes, so we, um, we also have a full, if you want to work there, uh, you do have to apply and you can apply under any position um, of the communities. And we also have a uh, graphic design. Um, if you are interested in doing any art, we do need people who make our flyers for our events and programs. And so if you do any type of graphic design, that would also be a really cool place to build up your portfolio. 
And, um, but we also, if you, if you aren't looking for a job, if you have another job, but you still want to get involved at the Cross-Cultural Center, we also have uh, the VIP internship. It's not a paid internship, but basically you would serve or help out um, any one of the communities that you want. And it happens each quarter and you can meet with them and go to the center um, and just help them out with any events or programming that they, you know, need some help with. Absolutely. And so if students want to learn more information, where can they go? Yeah, you can definitely, you can go to our Instagram, which is the, it's UC Davis underscore CCC. You can also find us on Facebook at UC Davis Cross Cultural Center. And you can also go to our website, UC Davis Cross Cultural Center. Perfect. And so I actually have a question either okay. for Sophia or Taylor, um, either one. I mean, actually, Jay could possibly answer this as well. Um, if you want, this is anonymous. Uh, if you want to make a new club or group on campus, what are the requirements? Mm. Who wants to answer this? Raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Help us out. <laughs> I can answer it for my I can answer it for my specific center. We have student organizations that we give like full funding to, um, mm -hmm. as long as you're like focusing in some way on the LGBTQIA community, any part of that, um, mm -hmm. you can form a student organization and we'll give you all the money that y'all need, that y'all will need to like operate. Um, we've had a lot of really great clubs like La Familia, which is for queer and trans uh, Latinx folks, and then like stuff like ACE Club for asexual students, so could be really anything. Yeah, I was just going to add to that. Um, so the, oh, is Jay, um, you yeah. lagged a little bit, Jay. Oh. I think we're good. Taylor? Yeah. So I was just going to add to that. Um, so the Center of Student Involvement will have definitely a full list of how you can form that club. Um, so I'm personally unsure of the exact requirements to form a club, but I know that we have a lot of clubs and that it's relatively easy to be chartered as a club. Um, as long as even if there is a little bit of overlap with existing clubs, but I would highly suggest as first years getting into those um, clubs that already exist and then seeing where there's a need to create more. Oh, that's really good advice, Taylor. Uh, we have one more question for all three. All right. <laughs> I'm so sorry for mispronouncing your name. If I do, I think it's Abu Bakker wants to know, what is there to do in Davis? <laughs> <laughs> Safia, Safia, maybe? Mm -hmm. Chip in? Oh, Safia's mm -hmm. muted. We'll, we'll wait till she gets unmuted. Taylor? I picked up a boba addiction. Um, <laughs> <laughs> since I got to Davis, there are lots of boba places and finding community um, here. I found like some lifelong friends here. So that's kind of what there's to do. There's a lot of beautiful outdoor places. Lake Berryessa is like only 30 minutes away. Yes, beautiful. Yeah. Um, I would say the farmer's markets are really mm. a plus for me. Um, you really do have to get creative. I'm not uh, gonna lie, you do definitely. Honesty, have to, yeah, honesty. Yeah, you have to get creative. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, the the farmers markets on the weekends is really nice just to sit down. And um, I think also there's some yo there's a nice yoga studio in Davis. I really enjoy it. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Love it, Jay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I honestly just spend a lot of time with my friends. I think I've made such a strong group of friends and like a, have a really strong community here in Davis. And so yeah, I'll go to like the farmer's market. I'll just go on a walk. There are a lot of really beautiful places all around campus. Um, I also just, I don't know if anyone else who like works at a center does this, but I find myself spending so much time at my center just because like that's where all my friends are at. Yeah. And um, I'll just like sit there and we'll talk. Sometimes we'll like watch movies on the, we'll put it on the big projector and stuff and just do fun stuff like that. Um, once you make your friend group, like I think the other stuff comes quickly. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Taylor, Jay, Safia. I appreciate it. 
and uh, to ask your own questions and discover all things about being an Aggie freshman, go to ucdavis.edu slash Aggie experience. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Wonderful Thank day. You. And I do want to remind everyone watching that each day are themes. So you can go check out the website and make sure to pop all of those questions into the Zoom Q&A or the Facebook Live. So next up, a diverse community of scholars. Tres Inclusive, you'll find your community as soon as you arrive. But first, I know from experience that Aggies love, love, love swag. I mean, so I have all of this swag. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see if I can get it in here. I have all these prizes. I know that our background keeps coming out. I got cups more cups i have pillows let me show you and i want to oh man you can't really see it but i have so much swag and so i want to tell everyone how to win this swag complete the google form for a chance to win some of this free uc davis free i want to remind you free swag all you have to do is find the link in the zoom chat or on facebook and you have to complete that link and i need everyone to do that and as everyone is doing that i'm going to start introducing our next aggie panelist who heritage spans the globe and i also want to apologize if i get anyone's name incorrect if i do they will fix <laughs> my pronunciation and say their name. All right, so first and foremost, he's an international student advisor to services for international students and scholars, Matt Kaminsky-Lucas from the Center for African Diaspora Student Success, Unoma Ananye from the Native American Academic Student Success Center, Maria Luisa Kimerli. And last but not least, please welcome Lizeth Rodriguez from the Center for Chicanx and Latinx Academic Student Success. Let's see if everyone is here. It's gonna take just a second to get everyone visible and unmuted. We have Matt, Unoma, Maria Luisa, and Lizeth, I see. Hello, hello. Can we hear hello. you? Hi. How is everyone? Good. All right. We have obtained the swag. I see some comments down there. They're, everyone is so excited about getting swag right now. Make sure everyone is unmuted before we get into it. We are waiting for Matt. All right. Make sure while we're waiting for our panelists to pop on up, you can fill out that Google form or the form, the Google form on uh, the Zoom chat to get that free swag. I have so much here that I want to send everyone. Yes, swag, 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 swag. <laughs> Everyone's so excited for swag. All right, in just a second. It looks like, Maria, we're going to actually start with you, Maria, just because I think Matt we have some technical difficulties with Matt and Unoma and Lizeth might be muted right okay. now. So let's start with you, Maria. How are you? Um, Osio, Maria Luisa, Kimberly, Dawadoa. Hello, my name is Maria. I am a citizen of the Cherokee Nation and I'm also Muscogee Creek. Um, my major is Native American Studies. I work as a student director um, for American Indian Retention and Recruitment, which is AIR within the SRC. And then I'm representing um, the Native Nest, um, which is Native American Academic Student Success Center. Okay, that, that is it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So what can our newest Aggies expect when they walk into the Native American Academic Student Success Center? So the Native Nest, we call it a home away from home. Um, it's super community oriented. So when you walk in, um, we have a library, well, we have academic sources for students. So we have a library, we have computers. Um, we even have like a refrigerator, a microwave, oh. a conference room, study yeah. space. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, like we have a, a huge amount of resources for students um, that are also culturally appropriate, appropriate too. Um, and it's open to natives and non-natives. So anyone can come in. And so how does the center help Native American students get involved on campus? 
Um, to get involved on campus, we have um, the Native American Student Union, it's NASU. We also have a ton of other student organizations like NAPA, which is for pre-law students that they can join. Um, we also have the AIR, which is at the SRC, but they can also um, work for AIR. We have so many other um, <laughs> orgs. We have the um, Native American Advisory Committee. So um, that's under the chancellor and they can join that. Um, we also have the Native to Native Mentorship Program. So if you wanna um, get help getting adjusted on campus, um, you can contact um, the NARI at ecdavis.edu um, and get more information on that. And then we also have an NES 198 course to get um, students to understand the quarter because it's like, it's really fast paced. Yeah. Um, so having community, like relating to students, like having alumni and native faculty to support you um, your first quarter. Um, and even like winter quarters are up too. So, um, there's a lot of uh, resources to go to and um, within there in the community, like you'll find leadership positions and stuff. Okay, and so I see that you're also involved with the Student Recruitment and Retention Center. How does that complement your work at the Native American Academic Student Success Center? Yeah, so being a student director, we have um, other positions too which is retention, so academic focused. And then we also have an identity um, retention initiative. And then we also have outreach um, for reservations, rancherias, um, and urban outreach. And so with the NEST, like for this last quarter, we had the Native American um, Youth Empowerment Conference. Mm -hmm. And we had students from all over California come, wow. learn about Davis, do campus tour, um, learn about all the majors that we have. And another thing that AIR does with the NEST is have Native Community Feast. We also help out with the UC Davis powwow that unfortunately was canceled this year, but it definitely will be happening next year. Um, oh gosh, we also went to uh, Bates powwow, which is for Two-Spirit, um, the queer community mm -hmm. um, over in the Bay Area. And then we also have a native community retreat. And this year we went to San Francisco, Point Bonita, and we had like 15 students. Um, the food was great. Um, we had a ton of fun hiking. We went to uh, museums and um, we also had like bonfires and stuff. Amazing, Maria. So can you yeah. tell everyone how uh, to find, find you guys and to learn more information? Yeah, so the Native Nest actually has Facebook, so follow us. Um, it's the Native Nest, and then we also have Instagram, Davis mm -hmm. Native Nest, and then for AIR, which is our Instagram, srrc.air, um, and then our Facebook is American Indian Retention and Recruitment. Perfect. Thank you so much, Maria. But make sure to hang out here. I'm sure we will have some questions. And I want to remind everyone to submit your questions in that Zoom Q&A for Maria, for Matt, for Noma, for Lizeth, for anyone. Um, speaking of Matt, we see you, Matt. <laughs> Hello. How are you? You made it. <laughs> I'm doing well. Thank you. All right. So, Matt, what is the Services for International Students and Scholars all about? Talk to me. Sure, our office um, handles support um, from international students. You know, UC Davis has about 7,000 international students from all over the world, and we handle support for international students from the time they're accepted to the time they graduate and beyond when they start their work experiences here in the United States. Amazing, and you're an international student advisor, so what's your role specifically there? My role specifically is um, to work to help students get all of the documentation and paperwork in order to obtain their visa to come to the U.S. and help them maintain their international student status while they're here and help them through what are at times some complicated immigration uh, regulations um, and uh, help them uh, apply for and be a part of some of the benefits that international students have while uh, inside the United States. So I'm guessing it, it takes a lot to apply and prepare. So is there some sort of checklist students can use? 
Sure, so everything that um, uh, students need to do, especially new incoming international students, um, they'll be receiving emails from us shortly. They'll be taken to our portal, which is called iGlobal, which the checklist for requesting documentation and getting everything in will be done online. So that's ease of use for international students, as well as our website, which is siss.ucdavis.edu. If you look there, there is a section for new incoming students and it lists everything that you will need to do. Oh, making it very easy for everyone, right, Matt? <laughs> I'm trying to at least. Yes. So how does SISS help international students learn about American culture? Sure, we start um, from the very beginning. We will have um, some online workshops for international students to be a part of, as well as um, pre-arrival uh, orientation, as well as we do international student orientation here at UC Davis. And the programming team in our office also offers um, Aggie Ambassadors, which are fellow um, uh, UC Davis students who are here to help be connections for new international students and help them get acclimated to UC Davis, life in California and life in the US. Amazing, and so I know you told us the website, but how can students learn more and get involved? Is there another area or mainly the website? The website's the best, siss at ucdavis.edu, or you can email us at siss at ucdavis.edu. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Matt. But don't go anywhere. We may have some questions for you. Again, make sure you're submitting them for Matt, Maria, Unoma, Lizeth. But next up is Unoma. Unoma, how are you? Are you there? Let's make sure. Can you unmute yourself? I want to make sure. There you are. Yeah. Beautiful. Hi. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I am amazing. Uh, could you talk to us a little bit about um, who is the Center for African Diaspora Student Success for? Um, we as the Center for African Diaspora Student Success were created as a retention program for um, African Americans and Black students on campus to help increase the rate of graduation for students and we provide various resources for students that are of African or African American descent. And those resources stem from tutoring to, um, we have our health professional on the, where we're located at the center, which is, which is CADS. We also have um, a space, quiet space to study. We offer free scantrons and Free, we, sometimes we have free textbooks and events that are catered for the community. And we also do um, a lot of collaboration with other student organizations like the SRC or the um, ACE, which stands for, um, I, I can't really remember, but we also do collaborations with ACE. And we offer um, like tutor for um, classes like chemistry, math, they're, all, they're, they're always tutors available for students to make use of our services. And I know you just went through a few of the benefits. Could you lay them out again of how does it benefit students? Okay, um, so being um, of African descent uh, in UC Davies, we're a very little um, population. So this center is striving to build stronger community and we ensure that um, students are able to be comfortable on campus, have resources, and build a strong bond with faculty as well as students. We, all, we also offer like internship opportunities, ensuring that there's a strong relationship with alumni as well as with students. And we offer various events. We, offer, we have free food as well at a center. So students are always welcome to come by, stop, their assignments have club events on the CAD Center for African Diaspora Students Access. So you can have your club meeting there, but you have to sign up with a form, but everyone's always welcome. Amazing. And so does the center host anything students should put on their calendars? Well, there's so many events <laughs> happening all year round. So I think the first step for students is to get on the mailing list Okay. So whenever you, when you arrive to campus, if you decide to come to UC Davis, when you arrive to campus, you have to make your way to the silo, which is where the center is located. And then we'll add you onto our mailing list and we mail you on every event happening on campus, as well as events happening in the diaspora, as well as 
job opportunities, everything. You once you're on the mailing list, you're never out of the loop. Mm -hmm. And some of the programs that we offer are Sister to Sister, which is for African and Black, uh, African American women who identify as women to come together to talk about issues and just going through school. It's just a safe space for everyone to open up. Mm -hmm. We also offer Black male seminary and mentoring for Black males. And we have Blurred Out, which is for like nerds and people who like anime and shows <laughs> open to everyone. And we also host like Black Greek shows, study jams during finals week and a lot of events. So once you're on the mailing so list, yeah, <laughs> yeah, mailing list as well as our Instagram, yeah, uh, UC Davis underscore CADS, UC Davis underscore C A D D S S. Beautiful. And, and, and is that the best way for students to learn more to get involved? Instagram or uh, do you have a website? Yes. Yeah, we have a website mm -hmm. at ucdavis.cads, cads.ucdavis.edu. Perfect. Thank you so much, you know, Ma, but don't go anywhere. We may have some questions. Again, make sure everyone is submitting those questions right there in the Q&A, and uh, we will be asking. All right, Lizeth, you have been so patient. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> good, and you? I am doing so good. Uh, Lizeth, I have a few questions for you. Um, how does the Center for Chicanx and Latinx Academic Student Success benefit first-year Aggies? Okay, so first and foremost, I want to say thank you for having me and for all of those who joined on this video and congratulations to all the students who got admitted to UC Davis. Um, I am, my name is Lizeth and I'm here representing Centro for, El Centro for Chicanos and Latinx stu uh, Academic Student Success Center, mm -hmm. also known as C-Class and informally known as El Centro. So here at El Centro, um, our mission is to provide holistic support to students throughout their academic year here at UC Davis. Um, so one way that um, the center can benefit uh, incoming freshmen is to like also come study at our study space and also we provide different programming throughout the year such as like free uh, tutoring and math, physics, chemistry, as well as writing support. And we also have a CAN counselor on site. So for those who um, want to talk to someone or for or just uh, like, you know, just vent, yeah. um, I make an appointment with our CAN counselor and you don't have to provide your name. It can be totally anonymous. Um, and yeah, we have different like volunteer opportunities for incoming freshmen. And um, we are also one of those centers that provides like free uh, testing materials such as blue books and scantrons throughout the quarter for when midterms and finals get uh, come around. Amazing. And so I, I know you spoke a little bit about the community support, but can we talk a little bit more about, you know, some ways that the center provides that community support? Yeah, so we provide community through our different programming as well as different events that we have at our center. So through our programs, we have um, like lots of a librarian, which is like if you don't feel comfortable going to like the library where there's like a lot of people, you can come to our center and get like intimate support with our librarians mm -hmm. with anything relating to research. And also if you need help like finding jobs, we also have the ICC who comes. And if you need help like with building your resume, mm -hmm. um, doing a mock interview, they can help you with that. And then every Tuesday morning for all of y'all who like pan dulce and have a sweet tooth, um, we have pan dulce every Tuesday morning and how they say oh. se vende como pan caliente. So y'all should come through every month, uh, Tuesday morning. And we also have like cafecito, te, and also for those who like pozole and menudo, every first Monday of the month, our counselor, our CAN counselor, Roxana Reyes, hosts um, different mental menudo topics. So if you are, are missing a little bit of home, come grab your pozole, menudo, and sit down to hear our platica. And they, uh, each platica um, about, uh, is um, around different topics. So you can enjoy that. And then uh, for those who also like to take naps throughout the day, we have a hammock at our center. And so trust me, you're going to use the hammock because you're going to get tired. So we have uh, the hammock and you can use it either throughout the day or in between classes. Amazing. So much food. I love it. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> um, and I know you touched just a little bit on the academic support with the resumes. Um, what other academic support does the center have? So we have the Latte with Librarian, in which you can come grab a, a latte, a cafecito, and talk to our um, librarians. So the, our, li our librarians are Roberto and Belen. So if you need anything, any help with research, they're here to help you with that. And then the ICC, which is the Internship and Career Center, also comes to our center and they help with anything related to jobs. So resumes, uh, mock interviews, cover letters. We also have um, advisors from the colleges come. So the uh, advisor from the biological science and the advisors from uh, letters in science. So if, when it comes to signing up for classes for next quarter, they help you with, uh, they suggest classes that you should take, whether or not they will fit your schedule. And then they advise you like, oh, you know, this professor is good and you'll be able to like manage your time taking these classes. So if you don't know, like they're here to help you because they're, um, they're professionals in their specific area. Amazing. And so I actually have a live question uh, for all four of you. Um, you can take, take your turns or one or two people can answer. Uh, from Molly. Molly wants to know how to cope with being from out of state and just being so far away from your family and your community. You know, how can you give some, give us some tips? Who wants to go first? Lizette? Yeah, so um, I'm from South Central LA and my first year I did get homesick. So I think what helped me the most was getting involved on campus. So I've been involved at um, El Centro since my freshman year. Mm -hmm. And so I've been volunteering with El Centro since my freshman year. I volunteered for two years and um, just being in the space, you get to know different people from like different orgs and you just put yourself more out there and just be, just like get involved with different communities. Like it doesn't have to be related to your ethnicity or your race. Um, there's a lot of orgs on campus. And I think that's what helped um, just me and my transition in, in not feeling as homesick. Thank you. Yeah, also, yeah, those orgs are so helpful in the center is just going to WRC, the Women's Resource Center or the SRC or the NEST um going to see class um and going to also sporting events um and meeting new people Thank you. um piggybacking of of what everyone has said it's really important to find your community and i believe that that's what davis is about so just reaching out to anyone anyone you see mm -hmm. just say hello like strike a conversation and that how you view your community because like at Davies, you're never alone. So you have to like reach out and talk to people and just build your community. Thank you, Noma. Matt, finish us off. Yeah, um, sorry, what was the question again? I've been answering questions here. I know you're, you're in the chat room. I see you answering everyone. I know you work, you work with international students. Some students are asking how to cope with just moving from even out of state. What are sure. some um, ideas for them? Yeah, sure. So um, not only do we deal with, um, you know, students moving in from out of state, and I moved here from, as I've been chatting from Philadelphia not too long ago, um, but that. also we're, oh, yeah. yes, yes, I was, I was connecting with people from back east. Yeah. Um, and, um, uh, you know, international students coming here, I, I think the first things that um, a that student should do is to get involved. I know there were some folks earlier talking about getting involved. Uh, there are, I don't know, several hundred groups and clubs here on campus. Mm -hmm. And not only is it my first recommendation to international students, it's my recommendation to any student. There's, a, there's at least four or five different clubs on campus that are around either your professional or personal interests, mm -hmm. and you should get involved in those right away. Those would be very helpful, connect you with other folks, and, and really help you get geared to be um, a good student and help you develop some uh, personal uh, uh, some personal hobbies as well as professional hobbies as well. Amazing. All four of you said the exact same thing. So clubs, communities, reach out. And thank, thank you, guys. Thank you so, so, so much. Um, say bye. We are all bye. done here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, want to ask a question that you didn't get asked or answered. Connect with campus experts at ucdavis.edu slash Aggie experience.
always be dropping those questions right in the Q&A. We are trying to answer as many as we possibly can. And here at UC Davis, uh, we are a data-driven people. Information is literally everything. So that means it is polling time. We want to know just who you are, class of 2024, and specifically where you are. Tell us where you're from, California, out of state, or international. Complete that poll that pops up on your Zoom screen, or write it in the Facebook comments if you're watching from Facebooks. And in the meantime, let me tell you about tomorrow's event. It starts with financial aid all you ever wanted to know, delivered in both English and Spanish. Uh, we'll also introduce you to the AB 540, an undocumented student center, and all the vital support they provide. All right, I'm looking at the poll. We are gonna keep it up for about 60 seconds. So if you see that poll, I wanna see. We have Northern California, Central Valley, Valley Southern California, outside of California, and international. All right, about 10 more seconds. Let's see. Quick, 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 quick. All that poll. I want to see. We have a lot of Northern California people, some Central, a lot of Southern California as well. 24 International, amazing. All right, we are sharing the poll results. So a majority, we have about 234 from Northern California, 43%. Central California, about 60. Southern California, 177. Outside of California, 46. International, I love it, I love it. Thank you to everyone for joining us. And so, you know, when you're the new kid on campus, you're gonna wanna start building your network because college, it, it isn't just about learning, it's about meeting people in your field and connecting outside our corner of the world. You are about to meet three students and a group called First Year Aggie Connections that uses a surprising technique to help students find like-minded peers. So please welcome Aubriana Zachary, Rachel Bingham, and Simran Geary. Let's see, let's see. Hello, Aubriana. Oh, hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. We have Rachel. Rachel, how are you? Hey, good afternoon, everyone. I'm so happy to be here and see you all present. Yay. <laughs> Simran, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm just ready to get started. <laughs> let's, you know what, let's just jump right into this. <laughs> I'm going to be going back and forth and I just want to remind everyone, please, please, please submit one of those questions in that Q&A or Facebook because Aubriana, Rachel, Simran, they want to answer everyone's questions. So I'm going to kick it off right here with Aubriana. Tell right. me a little bit about first year Aggie Connections. So first, I'm going to introduce myself. Yes. Hello, class of 2024. Woo woo. Um, so my name is Abriana, and I work with, I'm an advisor, and I work with First Year Aggie Connections. Um, so a little bit about First Year Aggie Connections. So First Year Aggie Connections is a program that helps new students um, transition into UC Davis. We have a bunch of different connections available to students to, to join. And joining a First Year Aggie Connection is just a fun way to get information, get get acclimated to UC Davis and gain a lot of like resources. Mm -hmm. um, so it was highly recommended, of course. So that's a little bit about First Year Aggie Connections. Amazing, and Rachel, um, what would you say the difference is between First Year Aggie Connections and maybe just joining a student club or a program like First Year Seminars? Well, just like Aubriana, I want to take a second to introduce myself. I'm actually a professional staff member on campus. Um, I coordinate First Year Aggie Connections. Um, I work for the Office of Educational Opportunity and Enrichment Services, and I also went to UC Davis, so I'm an alum. Um, and I think one really important thing to remember about First Year Aggie Connections is it is exclusive to first year students. So if you're a freshman, a transfer student, or an international student, um, this is something that you can only do your first year. So you really don't want to miss out. Um, if you think about a campus club, um, like some of our other panelists said, there are about seven to eight hundred student-led and student-run clubs on campus. Um, so what's really important to point out um, is those are all student-led and student-run, meaning any student can be a part of those clubs. Um, sometimes even graduate students can be a part of those clubs. So if you really want to meet other first-year students um, who are going through the same thing you are, you really want to start 
by joining a First Year Aggie Connection. Um, we usually have about 100 different connections every fall. Um, most of them are not for credit, so these are just fun, like, not academically rigorous ways to meet other people, um, share a sense of belonging. Um, and I would say the most, most important thing that makes a First Year Aggie Connection different is each one of them is led by a facilitator. So that is a staff or faculty member um, who is here to share that identity or interest or passion with you, um, but who is there to be a mentor and they really specialize in helping you transition to UC Davis. You're not gonna get any of that out of like um, a student led club or something like that. Thank you, Rachel. That was perfect. Now I know exactly what to do. I love it. And Simran, um, just kind of spitballing after, after that, what are some of the connections available? All right, just like everyone else is doing, I'm introducing myself <laughs> too. Hello, <laughs> everybody. I'm a recent UC Davis graduate from the class of 2019. I was a student program coordinator for First Year Connections last year. Prior to that, I was an intern, and I started off this program as a peer mentor in fall 2017. Now, before I get started in the available connections, I really want to take you back to Rachel and have her answer, how exactly do you register for connections? Yeah, so if you go on our website right now, you're not going to see all of our connections listed for fall. Um, usually they come out late spring or early summer. Um, so you're going to see all of the, you know, 100 plus connections on our website listed around the same time you register for classes. Um, so when you think about creating your academic schedule, you also want to be thinking about what you want to do outside of the classroom. Um, so we don't have the list up right now, but all of us are going to give you examples of some of our favorite connections from the past. I was part of the Black Girls Rock connection um, when I, well, I also went to UC Davis and I graduated in 2018. So when I was a first year student, I joined the Black Girls Rock connection. Go ahead, Sam. <laughs> So one of the connections that we have under a category called arts, music, and culture, it's called uh, Pixar It Didn't Happen. I see the group chat is blowing up, so I am kind of curious on who's more on the creative side of things and who's actually interested in photography. If this sounds like something you would want to do, it's a great experience if you're interested in documenting UC Davis iconic spots into a picture format, whether it's through your camera or your phone. This is cool because in that connection, you were able to go through a photo editing software, print and edit your photos and create it into your own personal album. So that was a really nice one. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Um, I also want to talk about my favorite connection. So I was a facilitator last fall. That means I was a staff person who led a small group of students. Um, and it was a brand new theme called Cats on Campus. Um, so as most of you know, and you're talking about in the chat, um, UC Davis is an ag school. So we specialize in all things animals. Um, fun fact that most of you probably don't know if you hadn't had a chance to visit our campus yet is we actually have community cats that live on campus. Um, so you can check them out. They're actually really popular on social media. Um, so in my group, um, I had a group of about 20 students and each week we went around and met all of the different cats on campus. So if you're a cat person, I wanna see it in the chat, um, type in the name of your cat. Um, so we met Cheeto. Um, um, he lives out in front of the physics building. He's an orange cat. Um, we even actually got to go into one of the labs at the vet med hospital. So cool. It was my first time in um, like, you know, such a tier one research lab. Um, and they're actually studying some really cutting edge research right now about um, uh, a toxic um, something toxic in the ocean um, that's impacting sea otters. And we actually learned about the connection between cats and sea otters that they're researching right now at UC Davis. Wow, I mean, I don't even need to be here. You guys can talk about this for the rest of our lives. I love it, I love it. There's so much information. And so I actually want to ask Simran a question. Um, if I sign up for a connection, uh, would participation be mandatory? Right, so just as Rachel had mentioned earlier, most connections are not for credit, which means you don't receive units for them like you would for a class. Mm -hmm. But just like your experience here on campus, um, we want you to take advantage of everything. So yeah. make sure you go ahead and attend those connection meetings. You make the most out of your time there. You meet the people who really vibe with you and connect with you because you wanna get the most out of that and grow. And Aubriana, can students change or drop a connection after registering? 
Yes, absolutely. So the same way that students are going to register for a connection, they're also going to use the same platform to like unregister for a connection. And if you guys happen to have any problems, um, just feel free to email us at aggieconnect at ucdavis.edu. Perfect. And Rachel, I know you just gave us, uh, or Aubriani, you just gave us the email, but Rachel, uh, how can students learn more and get involved that this is something they're interested in? So remember, you want to be out on the lookout for that list of connections around the same time you sign up for classes. Um, so you'll find the full list on our website, probably late May, early June. Um, we actually have a page on our website that's just for prospective students. So like you could go there and check it out right now. Um, mm -hmm. We made it really easy for you. That link is actually included in your digital admission packet. Um, so if you were accepted to UC Davis, you'll see information about first year Aggie Connection and you can go there. Um, if you don't have access to that, you can just go to Aggie connect.ucdavis.edu um, and you can see all of our prospective student information before the list comes out. Perfect. We have some questions for you three. All right. oh, ready oh, for it. Oh, there I am. <laughs> okay, we have some questions. This is for anyone, so feel free to find each other to answer these as I know <laughs> y'all are excited. All right, what type of resources are there available for first generation students? Um, I can go ahead and answer that question first. Um, so part of the Office of Educational Opportunity and Enrichment Services, um, we have two summer bridge programs. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure what that's going to look like right now, um, but those are extra experiences that help first generation students um, acclimate to um, the rigors of the university system. So mm -hmm. if you're online, you can check out STEP or you can check out TRIO. Um, we also have the Educational Opportunity program um, that is for all UC Davis students who qualify as first gen and low income um, they have the cottage which is a really cute um, little center on campus so they have their own space um, you can find academic advising um, fun social programming um, you know academic support tutoring all kinds of stuff amazing and I would just like to add on to that just a little bit once you go into your um, a, your junior year and your senior year, there is a program that the UC Davis School of Law does. It's called King Hall Outreach Program. If you are a first-gen identified student or a low-income student, this is very encouraged for you if you are interested in the pre-law route. Perfect, perfect. And that one's actually from Jocelyn. So thank you, Jocelyn, for that question. We have two more questions, maybe a, a few more if we have some time. Uh, this is for anyone, uh, maybe Abriana. Uh, Leticia, Leticia wants to know, what can you do if you do not know anyone going to Davis? How can you meet people? So let's give some advice. Hey, okay. <laughs> you can meet people by joining a first year Aggie Connection. Mm -hmm. It's number one. And then uh, another good tip is I'm a huge foodie. So just going to like the Coho or MU, like sitting, mingling, um, checking out the different um, cultural centers. Check that out. There's a lot of people that you can meet there. Um, just walking around campus. A lot of people like on campus are super friendly and they're going to say hi if you say hi. So just be be open to meeting new people. Join the First Year Aid Connections because by doing that, you're going to meet 25 to 30 students just like yourself. Um, so yes, those are a few few tips on meeting new people. Perfect. Uh, Rachel, Simran, anything to add? If that sounds too much for you, it's always a nice stroll in the MU looking at the student clubs that are set up on the side. So I really encourage you to go through those. There are some clubs that are continuously there. There are some new clubs that are there um, every now and then. And that's a nice way of just getting a feel for who's out there and who can I go talk to. Love it, Simran. Uh, we have we have two more questions or maybe three and they just keep coming in. Everyone's excited right now. Uh, question for Henry. He wants to know how hard is it to adjust to the quarter system? Um, I think all of us could answer that. Um, the quarter system, if you're not used to it, is really fast. Um, so you have um, an academically rigorous course. Um, UC Davis is a tier one research institution, so our coursework is not easy, and the quarter system means you have 10 weeks to do it. Um, a program like First Year Aggie Connections exists because we know that transition to the quarter system, making friends, finding your community is really difficult. Um, and so I would say that, you know, 
this is a shameless plug, but we want you to join things like connections, um, student community centers, stuff like that, because one of the best ways that you can get help with that transition is by meeting people. Meeting people like Abriana, like myself, um, like all of the panelists you heard today, um, because it's one thing to hear all about these resources. Um, you all aren't gonna get the opportunity to visit campus right away. And so we wanna make sure that you know people who are really here to get to know you personally and help you and you feel comfortable coming to us for help. Perfect. And a question that spirals into that uh, from Natalie. Can you explain one more time how to join Aggie Connections? Natalie is interested. We need to explain it one more time. Simple steps. <laughs> All right, um, so joining a connection um, takes place on our website. Registration is really easy. Um, so right around the time you go to register for classes, so like early summer, um, you're gonna go to our website or um, check your email because we email you a lot during the summer and you're gonna look for that list of connections. Find something that suits your interests um, that also matches with the day and time of your availability because it's part of a weekly meeting. Um, and then there's gonna be a registration link. So you just follow that registration link and um, if there's an available spot, it's yours. And another spiral into the next question that we got anonymous. Um, is there a maximum amount of people that can join one connection? Yes, I'll go ahead and take that one. <laughs> so our max is um, 30. So once we hit that 30 cap, um, unfortunately, there could be no other ads. However, we will open up a wait list um, for students who are interested in joining that, that connection. And then as other students, if there happens to be other students that drop that one particular connection, then we'll add people from the wait list to, into that connection. Just a side note, as the quarter is going on, a lot of students will be adding and dropping classes. Mm -hmm. Similarly, they will be adding and dropping connections. So stay tuned on the wait list because you don't know if you'll get in or not. Right. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Well, Abriana, Simran, Rachel, thank you so much. That was so informative. Obviously, everyone is going to sign up for <laughs> you hope so. Right. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you. <laughs> And, and thank you to all of our awesome panelists today. We appreciate for you joining us for Aggie Experience Live. You know, join us for the rest of the week at the same place, same time. Tomorrow's topic is financial aid and undocumented students. So if you want to dig further in today's topics, the conversation isn't over. Visit our page for all things incoming freshmen and the preview for the rest of the week ucdavis.edu slash Aggie experience. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for joining and we will see you tomorrow. Bye.